wishy-washy answers I cannot do because to me they are hella shady and it just screams trash. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're good, hope you're well, hope everyone is staying safe. Before I get into the video, I looked at my, Keith looked at my analytics and apparently half the people watching my videos are not subscribed. So I'm gonna need that half of you guys. Pause the, there's no need to pause. Just click subscribe and then carry on with the video. Cool. So I've been seeing this pop up on my Twitter timeline a lot over the past week. The talking stage of a relationship and um, people are making jokes about how like in the UK you've been talking to someone for a year or two years, whatever, whatever. Um, and people are having sort of mixed opinions on it. So I thought I would jump on the topic because I have some thoughts on it. It's kind of an interesting, weird, confusing space. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd talk about it, give my opinions. But as always, I want to know what you guys think down below in the comments. Let's have a conversation. Do you agree with what I'm saying? Do you disagree? Any life experiences, stories you can tell us? Um, let's talk. So first of all, I was like, what even is the talking stage? Um, I think the way I would describe it, I think the popular sort of description for the talking stage is that stage in between friendship like it's more than friendship, but it's less than an actual relationship. So it's that period in between, I'm guessing two people sort of know that they are interested in each other and they're talking in order to sort of get to know each other and see how things go. And I also understand it to meaning like on the way to an exclusive relationship, but I might be wrong in that part of the, de of the definition. So there's so many conversations around the talking stage and what you do and how you should act and what you should think and questions you should and shouldn't ask and things that you're entitled to or not entitled to. It's a very confusing space. Um, it's kind of a new age thing because I think back in the day there was like courtships and dating even apparently is a bit old fashioned, which I didn't know. And um, so now I guess sort of talking and going with the flow is the new thing, which I'm not really a fan of, but that seems to be what people do now. Um, relationships and that's that stage before relationships quite casual. Relationships are sort of unspoken things that you kind of fall into um, and it's a whole mess out there. So. If you are in the talking stage, these, I have personally some do's and don'ts that I think I stuck. Nah, I was a mess back in the day. <laughs> some do's and don'ts that I personally now, being a bit older and wiser, would advise you do and do not do in the talking stage. And then I'll go on to talk about some things that I think are red flags in the um, talking stage. And then might discuss how long I think the talking stage should be, although, I feel like that's very subjective to the situation that you're in. So in my opinion, here are some things that I think we should do in the talking stage. And this definitely applies to men and women, but obviously as a woman, speaking from what I believe is a woman's experience, but applies to both. So the first thing you should do, 100%, is be real, be yourself. I hear a lot about like, don't give the person 100% until they've like um, claimed you or whatever, or don't give your boyfriend, husband material. And whilst I understand that from a certain angle, like I wouldn't give, for example, I didn't sleep with Keith until we were married. I wouldn't give, there's certain things I wouldn't give them because I feel like it's sacred to marriage. Um, however, when it comes to you and your personality and your character and things that you would naturally do, I don't think you should hold back or give someone 50% just because you're not in a relationship with them. Because then I think you're therefore allowing someone else's actions, someone else's behavior to dictate your own. Whereas your actions and your behavior should just be your actions and your behavior. So in a sense, I'm saying give 100% realness, not 100% of your being, like giving them your heart and your soul. So I guess this sort of leads on to the second thing I think we should do in the talking stage is guard your heart. Oh my gosh. I mean, we should guard our hearts regardless, but when you're in a situation with someone where they have not exclusively said me and you are together, um, they have not exclusively said I want to be with you, your guardship of your heart should be up here. <laughs> so in practically what that looks like is not letting your mind, for example, get carried away from what's actually happening. And this is, I'm talking to myself because my imagination be all over the place. But I think it's important in the talking stage, especially don't let your, don't run away with your fantasies. So for example, when we do all the time, girls, we do it where someone will text you hi, um, 
or someone will say the opposite actually someone will say um lol lol and you'll be like oh my gosh he just put a lol and didn't say anything else he hates me or he said this 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 therefore he loves me and he wants to spend the rest of my life don't read too much into things and run away with your thoughts and your fantasies because that is one way to get um your heart broken because i've, I've heard i've been in that in situations like that where you think something is the case and the other person actually didn't think that was the case and it's not necessarily them leaving you on but you've just run away with something that was never really there to begin with so essentially you need to look at the facts not the fantasy facts not fantasy facts not fantasy and also another way to guard your heart again I, in my young self 16 year old me where were you adela where were you for 16 year old you Try to stay logical despite the infatuation. Infatuation, I think, is a dangerous thing. Like, I'm obsessed, for example, with Keith. I'm obsessed with him. I love him so much. And sometimes I'm like, this is scary because you just don't want to put that much of yourself into someone because it's scary because they could just get ripped away from you. <laughs> but in the talking stage, 100%, you need to be careful of not getting too infatuated. And if you are infatuated, try not to lose all sense and logic because that is how you start being out here in these streets acting a fool over someone. And then in hindsight, you're just like, I cannot believe that was me. Infatuation, girl. I say infatuation because at the time you think it's love, but <laughs> no, no, no. Infatuation will make you do some crazy things. So just try and um, always stay logical. Maybe keep some, keep accountable. Keep, well, keep yourself accountable to somebody who will tell you the realness and say, listen, you're acting a fool. Fix up. And the final thing I think you should do, which we don't do enough in the talking stage, is ask questions slash communicate. Communication, ask questions with the realness. I've heard so much of like, oh, uh, jokes that usually guys making of saying like, oh, when the girl asks, what are we? Like, that's a taboo question for you to ask. What are we? Where's this going? What's going on? And it's like, nah, B, I need to know. And I'm not gonna feel shamed into asking these questions, like making me look like I'm some crazy person because seven months down the line, I wanna know if you fancy me. Wanna know where you stand? Ask. Want to know how they feel about you in that particular moment even if it's one month in okay yeah they might take it as oh my gosh i need to run away because she's crazy about me no i'm just i just want to know where i stand one month in tell me do you like me do you from what you know of me now do you potentially see this going somewhere do you even want a relationship do you even believe in monogamy do you even want kids do you even want to get married these are normal questions and it doesn't automatically mean that i'm obsessed with you and i'm planning a wedding it just means i would like to know and the answer can be straightforward i don't know yet great fabulous thank you for letting me know and that goes with other questions because talking stage is such a vague and broad thing that two people might have two completely different definitions of it so you need to ask them questions like hey are you dating someone else um how would you feel if x y and z like what are your rules in this crazy space talking stage that we've made up and then I have four things that I feel like we should not do in the talking stage. And these are personal to me, so don't like take this as Bible, unless it's in the Bible. <laughs> don't take it as Bible, but just the importance is that you should know what your do's and don'ts are, rather than letting the person that you're with dictate that. So the first thing is, is don't play games. Again, I'm adding 15, 16 year old me that would send silly texts and be like, hey, wrong person. Try, getting a, try to get a response. <laughs> oh my gosh, I was so dumb. In our grown age, no games. That means no tit for tat, like, oh, they took five hours to reply, so I'm gonna take five hours to reply, or um, I'm gonna give someone the silent treatment because they did the X, Y, and Z rather than just, you know, talking to them about it. Those are the kind of games I feel like we still play in our big age because it's natural reaction sometimes when we're feeling a certain type of way. But I feel like in a talking stage, if you want it to be real, you just want it to be seamless and not seamless and peaceful, don't play games. <laughs> Ain't never gonna time from games. Another one, don't stay silent out of fear of losing that person. I see it happen a lot. I've probably been in that situation where you're so happy with what you have that you don't wanna do anything to shake the table. And this kind of goes back to the do that I mentioned, which is do ask questions. So this is kind of a contrast to that because a lot of people don't, for example, ask questions out of fear of scaring someone away. But it's like, 
then you're then you're not getting the person or that person is not getting the true you because you're holding back from some important things that you might want to ask or speak up on or tell them that you don't like number three big big one do not ignore your feelings i um what so for, give me i'm giving you an example my relationship with keith i am very emotional he's not he's very logical um and so he, he's quite black and white so when we'd have disagreements everything he said was like fact black and white science kind of thing so for so long i used to think wow like i'm always wrong and he's always right because he just comes with the facts and everything i sort of bring to the argument is based off of feelings and for so long i feel like we have been taught that emotions are the are the weaker um trait if that makes sense so logic always surpasses um emotions which even as i say out loud it kind of sounds true but what i mean by this is that you saying oh i feel like this seems like an invalid reason or justification for something but what i learned um is that no it's not and i feel like that's something that i learned and then had to pass on to keith so now when we have a disagreement i say do you know what the reason i'm bringing this up is because this is how this makes me feel and he's learned to be like okay that is valid and i've learned not every emotion has to be acted upon and sometimes the facts are the facts and you need to put your feelings in check so it's balanced I give you that example to say it's so important in that stage of getting to know someone that you never feel like your feelings or your thoughts or your opinions are invalid and I feel like a lot of the time and um, especially like if you're really into someone or almost infatuated with or falling in love with that person you can um, let them make you feel silly feel like an idiot feel like you're being um, um irrational for the way that you feel and i feel like that is a big don't do not let them do that and that's how you in the long term you end up with someone that you think you want and then you end up feeling uncomfortable and unable to be yourself because during that initial stage you didn't feel comfortable in the way you felt and your feelings and expressing those feelings finally one thing definitely not to do is do not compromise your non-negotiables the first thing is to have some non-negotiables um i remember an old pastor of mine saying like girls you need to know what you want because how you, you know what i'm just gonna hold this she said you need to know what you want and she even told us to make a list because then when someone comes you already know what you do and don't want and I'm not talking about, oh, I want them to be this at all, or, although that was on my list. <laughs> but it's not necessarily oh, I want them to, it's not like sort of shallow and fickle thing, it's actual non-negotiables. If you're someone who doesn't want kids, what are you doing talking or dating or getting to know someone who wants kids? What, what, how does that make sense? And with that, if you have some non-negotiables and you're in a talking stage with someone, that and you realize that they sort of it's a red flag they 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 have one of those things that you you don't want or vice versa what you shouldn't do is stay in that situation hoping that that will change with a relationship so like oh you know i want someone who is um respectful or not rude for example you want someone who's not rude very very simple thing you meet them and they're quite rude and you're like oh no but maybe when we're in a relationship that sis don't ignore the non-negotiables. And definitely don't compromise your non-negotiables. Unless your non-negotiable is not a non-negotiable, but by definition, it's a non-negotiable. Therefore, you can't compromise it. <laughs> As for moi, Adela Afadi, what were my red flags in the talking stage? Or say I was single now and I was back out in the market, what would be my red flags that would make me flee during the talking stage? I only have four. Just four. I don't ask for much. First one is inconsistency. I can't do it. I can't do it. For someone who's always in their feelings, I cannot have someone that's inconsistent. I cannot have you calling me every single day and then the next week you don't call me for a few days. And then they'll come and say, oh, but we're not together. You can't expect X, Y, and Z. Bruv, all I'm asking for is consistency. If someone is inconsistent, I just take that as you're obviously not serious about me. No, that's that's wrong. Okay, they might just be inconsistent, but that's a non-negotiable for me, so I'm out of here. Number two, which I've talked about already, is dismissing my feelings. I'm very big on that. Don't make me feel dumb for feeling what I'm feeling. Don't make me feel embarrassed. Don't make me feel shamed for feeling whatever I'm feeling. Don't laugh them off. Don't gaslight me, and don't ignore my feelings. 
I can't do that. Number three is someone who gives wishy-washy answers. I don't have time to waste. If I asked you, hey, where are we going? What, what are we? What do you want? Where do you want this to go? And you're giving me an answer that's like, you know, I don't really want to put labels on this. Or you're telling me, oh, you know what? It's just it's me and you, innit? Look, how do you feel when you're with me? That's all that matters. What's out there? Brother, I just asked you a question. Where do you see it's going? The answer could be as simple as, I don't know yet. Great, great, Billy. I'll leave you to it. That's all I want. Wishy-washy answers I cannot do because to me they are hella shady and I'll run and it just screams trash. That's what it screams to me. It screams trash. You know what we do with the trash? We put it in the bean. <laughs> oh, I'm tired. And the final thing, the final thing, the final red flag for me, which I know is like quite, um, I don't know actually, I feel like the people that watch my channel will probably agree with me, but general popular consensus as it appears on like social media, let's say, would disagree. But a big red flag for me is if you're talking to other people and I don't care what anyone says. If I found out someone that I was talking to was also talking to someone else, I am out. You might as well have had an affair. You might as well have married me and cheated on me. No, I'm joking, it's not, that, it's not that deep. But that's where I stand on it. And I've heard a lot of people say, you should date multiple people. I don't, it doesn't make sense to be talking to multiple people at the same time. You're gonna miss out on the love of your life. And first of all, damn, have I just not got it like that? Like I've never been in a situation where there's like more than one person. To, not even, yeah, one person that I'm like really in at one time. So I'm like, damn, you guys must have it like that to be having, be, to be going on two, three, four dates at the same time, first of all. But secondly, it's not necessarily about, oh, you put all your eggs in one basket. It's just, if I'm talking to someone and we're not in a friendship stage, we're not in a relationship stage, but we both know that we like each other, then I would think that you should be putting all of your energy with respect to your get to know someone energy into what we've got. And if you are able to be in a talking stage with somebody else at the same time, then you don't have the level of like for me as I would want. And as soon as I found out that someone I'm talking to you is also talking to someone else, I'm out. And I don't care if they say, oh, well, we're not even together though. Yeah, we weren't. And now we never will be. <laughs> so in conclusion, how long should the talking stage be? I hear people bust and joke about people in the talking stage for two, three, four, five years. Now, of course, if you're in a talking stage for years and you, you identified, <laughs> Some of the don'ts that I've talked about here, they've got wishy-washy answers, they're dismissing your feelings, they're inconsistent. Sis or bro, get out. Get out because this person is wasting your time. That being said, how long should the talking stage be? Who knows? You don't know. Every situation is different. Were you friends before? Because some friends know each other very well and therefore, it does, did it even need a talking stage? Some people, um, they don't get to see each other that much and therefore their talking stage needs to be a bit longer because it takes longer for them to get to know each other. Some people fall quick. Some people take long to open up and break down walls. So it's very subjective and very specific to that situation. The only thing I would say is that if you start to feel, you know, this is taking too long or oppositely, this is going too fast, that's the most important thing and that's what you need to identify and that's what you need to speak up about. My situation with Keeve, I don't really know how long my talking stage was. We were friends for about six months, but even within that friendship, I caught feelings and I imagine he, I would have said, yeah, he liked me too, but we never ever spoke about a, a romantic relationship, we never flirted, nothing like that. So when did the talking stage start? Who knows? From the day he said he liked me to the day we started um, a relationship, it was about a month. So does that mean our talking stage was a month or was our talking stage somewhere in that six month friendship? Who knows? Who cares? It's very subjective. I think the most important thing to take away is you need to know what your non-negotiables are. You need to know what you will and what you won't stand for. 
You need to know what you want in a person and go from there. Finny doll, earring drop. <laughs> Anyways, like I said, let me know your thoughts on this video. This one has got many, many opinions because it's kind of a new, random made up concept. Um, so there's no like hard and fast rules. But I would like to know what you guys think. If you did like this video, do give it a thumbs up, guys. The algorithm, the algorithm, help me out. If you like it, thumbs up. And yes, if you are in that 50%, if you are in that 50% that is not subscribed, what you waiting for, girl or boy? Although 99% of you are girls, hit the subscribe button. And I will see you in my next video. Love you. Bye.